Ready? Are you ready? <laughs> it's been a long time coming. I'm ready. Hey going guys, Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. So we've just unloaded our new machine and got it into the workshop. So we have been waiting for this for about 11 months now. We were supposed to take delivery in late May, but due to the worldwide shortages on components and materials, it got delayed. So we are now nearly end of September and it has finally arrived. So now that I've got it in the workshop, let's unwrap this thing and show you what we got.
Ooh. <laughs> Why are you unwrapping it? My job. So what we have here is a Sunnen HTA 4100. This is a horizontal honing machine. This is a nine and a half meter machine. It is their mid-range hone. So they do come small and they do come larger. We will be able to hone barrels up to 4.1 meters in length. This is gonna suit the jobs we do perfectly. So what I need to do now, I need to get it off its shipping pallets, get it on the floor and we can start setting it up. After we've got it set up, we'll tell you a bit more about it. This machine has been a goal of ours ever since we got our vertical Della Pena going. The vertical can only do up to about a 1250mm long barrel, which meant all the longer stuff I would have to outsource to different companies in order to get it home. Of course we were a new business, we weren't able to get the finance we would need to buy a machine like this. We needed to be trading between 3 to 5 years in order for any finance company to loan us the money. So I was more than happy to continue to outsource the honing of the bigger barrels, but we started to have a lot of issues with a few of the other companies we were using at the time where they would take a job on and then it would triple in price or the time frame would blow out from a week to a month. Their intention was to make me look bad with my customers in order to drive my customers directly to them. So it was at that stage I decided I really had to do something quickly about getting a honing machine of my own. So because there was a six to eight month build time on the machines, I needed to get the deposit as quickly as possible. So I worked seven days a week, stupid hours per day. I sold off equipment I wasn't using. I sold off exchange components that I had double ups of in our fleet in order to get the deposit so I could then place the order for the honing machine. And at that stage, our business had been trading long enough that we were able to get finance for the rest of the machine. And one of the reasons why I chose a Sunnen over any other brand is they are considered the world leaders when it comes to abrasives and honing machines. And I've been using Sunnen tooling in my vertical honing machine. The supplier of Sunnen gear here in Australia is Watson Specialized Tooling. And I've been dealing with them for the past four years. They are only half an hour up the road from me. So if I have any dramas or I need any help or more tooling, I can just get in the car and go and get it. So it just seemed like a really smart option to buy a machine that I can get help with and service support with if I'm to have any dramas. And I was able to go up to their workshop and see the smaller version, the HTA 2100, in action. I did some test work on that with one of their reps and I decided then this was the machine I needed. Now that we've got the two ends lined up, we can bolt those together and then we can install the cover plate between the two halves of the machine.
Right, so now that that's done, we can get everything else on the machine unwrapped. So that's George, that's my butcher bird. He comes into the workshop nearly every day and he either comes in to take a cracker or he takes swarf. So I don't know what he does with the swarf, probably puts it in a nest, but he seems to like stuff from the lime borer, aluminium swarf and even the big chunky stuff. And he'll just take that and I don't know where he goes, but <laughs> today he wanted a cracker, so. Come here, come on. Right, so I'm about to go through and level up the machine. I have opened up the box of leveling feet and they are just square plates. There is no recess in them in order for the leveling bolt to locate on. I'm not a huge fan of square leveling feet, so I'm gonna make up my own out of some aluminium and we're gonna sit them underneath the machine instead.
Right, so I've got the eight leveling feet made. So the material I use, it is a 75 diameter machine grade aluminium. So the reason I used aluminium is the machine is not overly heavy, so they don't need to be steel. The overall weight of that machine is 1800 kilo. There are heavier machines in the workshop sitting on a lot less. So aluminium is going to be perfect for that and it's not going to rust. I've also done a 20 mil wide by three mil deep counter bore on the top of them so the bolts can then locate into. Righto guys, now that I've got the levelling feet under it, what I need to do is check the alignment of the two halves. So I need to run a string line from one end to the other, and then I can check the alignment, do any adjustments I need to, and then I can go through and level the machine. I did jump the gun a little bit, and I did put this cover plate here on, so I do need to remove that in order to run the string line through. So the string line has revealed we do have a bit of a gap in the middle. So what I need to do is push one end over in order to bring that back into alignment. So now that we've got the bed in alignment, I've moved the string line to the top of the channels to see if the two halves are level. Now I need to go down the length of the bed with a spirit level to make sure there is no twist. Okay. Good boy. There we go. My spirit level doesn't fit in between the frames, so I'm using my machinist level. It's a little bit overkill for what we're doing. So I need to adjust the bolts to bring the bubble of the level into the two centre red lines. And I'm going to do that down the length of the bed where each of the levelling feet are positioned. That will be more than accurate enough for a honing machine. Can do. So now that we've got the bed level, I'm just going to lock down the nuts on the levelling bolts so nothing can move. Right, so now that I've got all of that done, I'm gonna start putting together the oil tank.
Hold on. Righto, so I'm not entirely happy with how that is sitting at the moment. The pan can't go any further under the machine, but it does seem to stick out quite a bit on this side. And this is the working side of the machine. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the pump out, I'm gonna turn the tank around, I'm gonna put the pump in from the other side. So the part that is sticking out will be on the other side where I won't be very often. So I'm much happier with how that sits now. It's out of the working line of the machine. So now that that's done, we can fill up the oil tank with the honing oil. Now that I've got the oil tank set up, we'll give you a quick look at what's involved in the work holding end of the machine. This part on the end of the bed is actually a safety device in order to stop the honing head whipping around if it falls out of the end of the barrel. So it is basically just a clamp that goes over to encapsulate the bar, but if this is up, there's a limit switch on the back of the hoop that will not allow the machine to start up unless this is closed. After that, we have our oil sprayer. So these can be moved up and down the bed depending on what length barrel you are honing. So there's one nozzle at this end and there is one at the other end of the machine and what they are is just lock line that you can move around and that is just so you can spray oil down the inside and clear out material. After that there are these covers. So these covers are put over the end of the barrel while it is honing and it's just to stop any splashing of the oil when the hone head comes out of the barrel and then goes back inside. They are just pushed up on nylon pads in whatever configuration or whatever length barrel you are using, they can be adjusted to suit it. And these things are the clamps that hold the barrel. So they are a V block with a chain that is used to basically choke the barrel down so it can't rotate or move while the honing process is happening. So when you're working on the smaller diameter barrels, you lift the V blocks up to bring them into the center line of the honing head. But when you're doing large diameter barrels, 
you simply wind down this nut here and you can lower the V-block down so that you can then achieve the right center height to the honing head. Once you've lowered the V-blocks all the way down, if you're doing a larger diameter barrel, you can then unbolt the V-blocks off the stands and bolt them directly down on top of the plate using the marks and the bolt holes that have already been pre-drilled and marked on the top plate of the clamp. Both of the bed sections also have a low point in the middle of them to catch any of the honing oil. There shouldn't be a great deal of oil getting around up at the drive unit end. That just has a catchment area and a tap. So if you do get an excess of oil in there, you can drain it off into a bucket or a can and you can bring it back down to the working end of the machine and put it back in there. Now that I've got the oil tank set up, we're gonna get on to opening up some tooling. Extension. Yep. Right, let's go. Heavy duty. That's a reinforced one. Heavy duty. does all the smart stuff. That's the main head. Righto, so we've got all of our tooling unboxed. What we ended up getting with the machine was an abrasive starter package that comes with a variety of roughing and finishing stones. We also got some new master holders and some stone supports. With the tooling package, we can actually hone from 63 mil out to 380 mil, but the machine is capable of honing out to a 530 mil inside diameter barrel. So I decided not to get any larger tooling because what we have here will do the majority of the work we currently do now. And we also run sun and tooling in our vertical honing machine, so the tooling that fits in that machine will also fit our horizontal. We also got two 72 inch extension shafts for the hone plus we also have the AM heavy duty honing head 150 mil extension and a coupling so we can put all this together so if we're doing a four meter long barrel we would run two of the shafts bolted together if we're doing a two meter long barrel we can simply pull one out 
and hone a shorter barrel without having a four metre long drive shaft hanging out of the power head of the machine. On the inside of the drive shaft, you do have another shaft which drives the honing head advancing of the stones. When you're assembling them, you do need to get them in alignment, otherwise things just don't work. So we're gonna put this one together on the bench. That's the extension and the coupling connected. What we're going to do now, we're going to fit the honing head to the two metre bar, so you can then see what that looks like. So now that we've got the hone head attached to the drive shaft, I'm just going to remove the pinion so we can then fit some tooling to it. So we've got two different styles of stones here. So we have stones that go into a master holder and the other stones that have a master holder basically already attached to them. Right, so we've got our hone head assembled. When you are using the sun and equipment, there are two stones, one on each side of the head, and then there are two guides. They help hold the hone head in the center of the barrel so things don't walk around so much and destroy stones. But they are a sacrificial material. They wear out evenly with the stones. That's what it looks like with the large stone set in. So that there will handle from an eight inch to a 12 inch barrel. So we'll pull this apart and put our smaller set of stones in so you can see how small they are. So that set of stones in the fully closed position can do a 64 mil barrel, but when you wind them all the way out, it can reach a little bit over 100 mil. Right, so now that I've showed you that, we're gonna show you what it looks like once it's installed on the machine. So the main drive bar connects to the drive unit via a thread. So it gets threaded into the drive unit and then locked into place. And there is also a hexagon key that goes down the inside of the drive bar. All of that is attached to the drive unit. The main drive unit spins the bar while the honing is being done, which expands the hone head in and out. There is a three horsepower motor running through a gearbox, running then onto the drive bar for the honing head. It has a range of 20 RPM to 300 RPM, and the carriage is driven by a two horsepower motor, which is run off a flat belt. And the stroke speed of the carriage can be set from one and a half meters a minute out to 27 and a half meters a minute. And to control the feed rate and the speed of the hone head, that is all done via this touch screen controller here in the middle of the machine. So I am gonna need training on how to program this in order to hone barrels. From here, I can control the feed rate of the carriage, the rotational speed of the hone head, I can set its stops, so if we're only doing a one metre barrel or a two metre barrel, its stroke length can be set from here. Basically, you can program it and it will be fully automated. It will even advance the stone head. You can set timers, so if you're doing something else, 
you can set the machine, let it run. When it's done, it's 15 minutes, you can come back and check it, reset it and run it again. Even though we've got the new honing machine, I'm not gonna decommission or sell our Delapena. Not only is it a really good machine for some of the smaller repetition jobs we do, but it also has a lot of history. I'm gonna hang on to that one for a while. So that's as far as we can go with the machine. We've got everything assembled that we can. I still need to get my electrician in to then wire up the machine so we can plug it in and use it. And then even after he's done that, I still need to get one of the reps to come down and do a final inspection on it, and then he can commission the machine ready for work. So unfortunately, we can't show you the machine in action just yet. So we've got our honing machine, everything set up. It did happen a lot quicker than I expected it to, but I'm very excited now that it is here. It did take a lot of hard work and a lot of extra hours in order to make this happen. And a big thanks to Watson Specialized Tooling. Without those guys, we would not have been able to get this machine over from America. So I'm really excited about getting the training done on the honing machine and then getting some jobs in it. So keep an eye out for a video coming up where we'll be putting this thing to work. Thanks for watching. Oh, this is going to be great. <laughs> Don't laugh. You ready? How you going, guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Oh, fuck. Where, where were you? I forgot everything I just, you just said. <laughs> How you going, guys? Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering. Oh, fuck. Oh, my God. Right, so the hut, the, the hun and... <laughs> Where'd you, how'd you start that? And you can... Fuck, where was I going with that? With the tooling package we received, we can hone from 63 mil out to what? So with the tooling package, we can hone from 63 mil... Oh, what size was that? <laughs> the tooling package we bought, we can hone from 63 mil out to... Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> right. oh, you got this. Right, so we've got two different styles of stone. Are you ready? Yeah. I know what I'm doing. It's hard for everyone else to understand the way I English things. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Oh. Fuck off train. <laughs> I was going good. <laughs> if there's an fuck off train. Where to start? You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Curtis is struggling. <laughs> Wrap this seriously. Must have been Friday, are they? It's just a block of wood. <laughs> it's a, a wrapped up block of wood. <laughs> it just wood. <laughs> More wrapping. Oh my <laughs> god. This is why we needed a new drawer. Yeah. <laughs> why stuck? Do you need me to pull on it? Yeah, yank on it. <laughs> 12, 9, okay. 15. Yeah, it should be in order. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you can't do that. You reckon that'll set a few off? <laughs> you can't do that. What are you doing? It's the wrong way now. No, I'm going to do it. No, undo it. Oh, come on, it'll set off the world. <laughs> <laughs> this looks really funny. Hang on, does it roll over or under? Does it matter? I don't think so, so I'm like a <laughs> toilet. So today is the day we finally... Right. <laughs> what the hell? Is he back? Yeah. George, I'm gonna let a big piece, mate. Ha <laughs> ha